So the ultimate goal from a military sense of all this surveying and everything is not just to make maps uh, to get the army from point, point, point A to point B, which of course is very important, but uh, engineering defensive structures is incredibly important, obviously. And But you can't build the fort until you've done the survey of the land you want to build your fort on. Are you using the best land? Uh, are you defending a waterway? What's the purpose of the fort? We don't just build a fort for no reason, right? Well, I guess there's government waste back then too, so they probably might build a fort for no reason. But what I'm trying to say is it's got to be there uh, to defend something important because you're going to have to sink a lot of time and money into building this fort and there are very strict mathematical principles behind why forts are designed the way they are. And so all the equipment I have here is basically for drafting. Again, something surveyors would have had to have done as part of their normal duties is to make technical drawings of the area they survey. So a lot of this equipment they would have been more than familiar with. This is kind of neat here. This is called a ruling pen. Still used them you know, up until, uh, well, I think they're still using them today. But basically, if you want to make a thin or a thick line on your technical drawing, you would increase or decrease the size of the spades here, dip it in your ink, and as you're drawing, it'll make a thick or a thin line based on that, uh, you know, to represent walls or whatever on your, on your technical drawing. This is a neat piece. This is called proportional dividers. So, by sliding this part up or down and lining it up with marks that you probably can't see on the video from there, but right now I have it lined up on the number three mark. It's a little bit breezy out today. So, I am going to, once that's lined up, when I measure something from down at these two forks, it is automatically now increased times three here. So if I want to make a scale drawing of this fort or anything else and make it three times larger, all my measurements, when I measure from here to here, will now be replicated on this end three times larger. So it's a proportional divider. Kind of a neat piece. We could go through all the little distant, uh, you know, distinct things here, but uh, you'd get bored to tears. So let's just talk about very briefly why forts are designed the way they are. There is always a method to the madness. The idea basically in the 18th century, and this was uh, developed by a Frenchman uh, uh, named uh, Vabon, is that forts have bastions. Bastions are built uh, to be the cornerstones of all fortifications. They provide interlocking fields of fire around your fortification because it's assumed that cannon and men basically fire straight. So if they're firing straight from this wall and straight from this wall and straight from that wall, there are your interlocking fields of fire. There is not much dead zone that is not covered by musketry or cannons. Makes it incredibly difficult for any would-be adversary to approach your fortification. Uh, so again, there's a method to it, there's a science, and everything has to be in proportion based on the uh, understood distance of a musket, which is about 100 yards effective. Uh, so you don't want to have your walls or your bastions be beyond musket uh, distance shooting from one end to the other. And then there's a very specific way of attacking a fortification. You can use the very small dead zone to your advantage if you're attacking. And that's uh, where the term siege craft comes in because you're laying siege to the fortification and you're digging trenches towards that dead zone in your bastion. That's called sapping. So you may have heard the old term sapping and mining. That comes from when you're digging these trenches towards the dead zone up into the wall to the port where you then dig a mine underneath the wall and explode the mine. There's a big kaboom and that usually ends the siege as the walls tumble in on each other. But again, all of this was used from the late 17th century right on up through the early 20th century. It was the inventation, uh, invention of rifled cannons and more powerful guns that could start to knock brick and masonry walls down that uh, kind of changed the face of military engineering, but before that, didn't change for two or three hundred years.